Welcome to the Fabulous Fact Show that answers all your groovy questions. Oh, yeah, what'd she what? say? Oh, she says do the pointy oh, one. Do the pointy one. Oh, we like this. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. In today's show, we got some fantastic little threads. Some crazy little chicks. These hip little fellas get to bong the gong. <laughs> yeah, and don't forget the psychedelic competition. Woo! Oh, yeah. Hey, Miss oh, yeah. Oh, 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 Groovy dancing. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Uh, what's that? What? Oh, a bee. She says a it's bee. a bee. Oh, Miss Chicken, don't be scared of bees. They're clever little things. In fact, I have a letter here from Ryan Turner in Coford in Gloucestershire who would like to know how bees make honey. And Monique Huggins from London also wants to find out how bees make their honey so yummy. So I'd send Monique to visit Colin White at the Twickenham and Thames Valley Beekeepers Association. Uh, but before they get to see the bees, they have to put on some pretty weird clothes. <laughs> Let's take a look, yeah? Okay, Mr. Hey. Bee! At last! Now I'm ready! And I'm ready too. There's just one thing you've forgotten. What's that? Your gloves. What? You want me to do the washing up before I go and see the bees? No, beekeepers like to wear gloves to stop the spread of disease between the beehives. OK, I've got the right clothes, I've got the right gloves, let's go. Do the bees get angry? Yes, they can get very angry, Monique, at this time of year. But you don't have to worry. As long as you stay calm and don't make any sudden movements, you'll be OK. This is the hive we're going to take the honey from. Richard here is going to help us, and he's going to take the lid off now. A few bees here, which we're going to brush away. This is the clearer board, and there it goes. Now we're going to lift out these combs, and we're going to take them away and extract them. Would you like to hold that while I brush off these few bees? Okay, straight in here. That's it. Beautiful. Honeybees need nectar to make honey. They get the nectar from flowers and use their tongues, which are a bit like straws, to suck the nectar out of the flowers. The nectar slides down into their stomachs, where it is stored. When they are full of nectar, the honeybees return to their home or hive. When they get back to the hive, some other bees, called nurse bees, suck out the nectar and make it soft and gooey by chewing it. When it's ready, the nurse bees put it into the honeycomb and then they seal it with some wax, where it is kept until the bees want to eat their homemade honey themselves. Right, Money, pass me one of the frames of honey so that we can start extracting. That's great. Can I eat the honey yet? Not yet. We're going to take the cappings off first. See how easy it is? Oh. There's all the beautiful honey ready for extracting. Well, Monique, you've seen it spun out of the combs into here, and it's now running down the walls. It's running into this sieve here. Can I try some now? Well, normally, we'd leave it for three or four days, but as it's you, we'll run off a jar. So, hop, would you like to hold the jar under the tap? and we'll pour some in. Mm. Well, Mr. Barker, now I know how honey is made, I can tell you that it's yummy! Mr. Barker, do you know what the next question is? No, I don't. It's how many questions are you going to get right in... Oh, no! Yes, it's... Bong the Gong. Welcome along to... Bong the Gong! show where you challenge Mr. Barker with your mm -hmm. quick-fire questions and he has to concentrate very hard to answer them. I certainly do. <laughs> I can't concentrate any harder, Miss Chick Chick. Asking the questions today, it's Gleadfield School oh, from yeah. Birmingham. Oh. Hello, Mr. Barker! Hello to you, you smiley bunch, but you won't beat me, you won't beat me. Well, let's see, shall we? <laughs> Remember, if Mr. Barker gets any questions wrong, Miss <laughs> Chicken will bong that gong. Beautifully done, Miss Chicken. Could we have the first question, please? Kimberly, 
Dear Mr. Barker, name something that most dancers wear on their legs. Oh, stuff that most dancers wear on their legs. Hair! Uh, Wrong! No, I did trousers! Wrong! No! Oh, Mr. Barker, we were thinking of bells! Oh, I'm bells! Sorry. Could we have the next question, please? Terry Joe. Name a month that has 31 days. Oh, a month that has 31 days. Uh, January! January has 31 well days! Well done, Mr. B. Yeah. Could we have the next question, please? Aaron. Name two events in the Winter Olympics. So two events in the Winter Olympics. Okay, snowy sports, uh, ski jumping, That's and, one. Uh, and uh, bobsleigh. Well oh. done, Mr. Uh, Barker. Yes, Could yes. we have the next question, please? Do Rebecca. What's the capital of Sweden? Oh, the capital of Sweden. The capital of Sweden is uh, 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 Stockholm. Stockholm yes, is the correct yes, answer. Yes, well done, yes, Mr. Yes. B. For the last question here, let's go to Leanne. How many days are there in two years? Oh, in two Ooh. years. That's like maths. Okay, seven hundred and thirty. Well done, Mr. Barker, but there goes the hooter. You only scored four out of five, which means that Gleefield School in Birmingham have beaten the brain of Barker. Yeah! Oh, and they were so smiley, but they made me look like a dimwit. <laughs> they did well done, Gleefield. You win the Bong the Gong Award. Yeah! Yeah, guaranteed to become a family heirloom. That's it for today's Bong the Gong. You. It's competition time, your chance to win this amazing globe. It talks, but thankfully it doesn't sing, Mr. Barker. Miss Chicken. All you have to do is answer this simple question. What is the name of the famous old wall that separates Scotland and England? Is it A, London Wall, B, Herbert's Wall, or C, Hadrian's Wall? What is the name of the famous old wall that separates Scotland and England? Is it A, London Wall, B, Herbert's Wall, or C, Hadrian's Wall? Call this number and leave your answer. 0891 That's 0891 Calls cost maximum of 25 pence and lines stay open till midnight on Sunday. One winner will be picked at random and announced at the end of next week's Dear Mr. Barker. Check with the person who pays the phone bill and please dial carefully. And now it's time for... Yes, it's time to ferret out a fact about the tallest, the strongest, the smallest, and the longest things, people, and places in the whole wide world. <laughs> and this week, it's the largest palace in the United Kingdom. It's called Hampton Court. The palace is so big, it has 4,500 windows, and its buildings cover an area of 24,000 square meters, uh, which means you could fit about mm, 12,000 phone boxes inside. <laughs> That's a lot of phone calls. Today, Perfect Partnership provides comfort and cleanliness. Welcome along to W.O.W. Weird or What? This afternoon, how a giraffe has its very own mobile comb. Mr. Handy, have you lost your mind? Giraffes don't have mobile phones. What kind of phone calls would a giraffe make? Hello, it's Mr. Giraffe here. Have you got that incredibly long tie I ordered? <laughs> I said mobile combs. Oh. Oh. Combs. Haven't you seen any oxpeckers? I can't hear. I've seen no boxpeckers, only some birds which appear to be nibbling away at the giraffe's fur over there. I can't imagine what that must feel like. It looks like it tickles, but I guess the giraffes would be laughing if that were the case. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Barker, yeah. wait, wait. they are the oxpeckers. They clean and brush the animal's fur. I know how the animals feel. Uh, hey, hey, that's one there in front of you, isn't it? Uh, uh, who's in the twit? I can't hear him. I... We spend all this money sending you to exotic locations, and when you get there, you're in a daydream. Yeah, uh, no, I don't want any ice cream, thank you. Besides, it would melt in the sunshine, and those crazy birds over there might come across and start pecking at it. They're still going at the giraffe. Mm. Yes, viewers, the oxpecker is a bird which combs out animals' fur, removing dust and insects. This giraffe is grateful for the mobile cleaning companion who follows wherever he goes. And the oxpecker is happy, too. It gets to keep some of the giraffe fur to help line its nest. True friendship. Huh. You see, Mr. Barker, that's the oxpecker. What? Uh, nope, I don't see any oxes, so why would there be any pecking things? <laughs> Weird or... <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, look at it. Uh, oh, I've just been sent a photo from my Scottish cousin, Angus McCotop, and a very handsome fellow he looks to in his tartan tam-o-shanter. Look, Miss Chick, he's off walking in the highlands. Oh, 
Oh, uh, that's right, with your cousin, Carrie McKitten. Yeah. She's beautiful. Mm. What a pity, because they could have helped with Kirsty Taylor's question, what is tartan? Hmm. Well, we've sent Paul off into Edinburgh for a bit of a tartan fling. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Mr. Barker. I'm here at the Museum of the Scottish Tartan Society, surrounded by some of the 2,500 tartans that are available. It's funny, though. I don't seem to be able to find anything from the McBarker clan. This is Donald, who's an expert. Uh, let's get the gag out of the way immediately. Donald, where's your trousers? Donald, where's your trousers? Anyway, yeah, what is tartan? <laughs> tartan is a checked cloth, woven in many colours, particularly associated with Scotland. Um, we wear it at all sorts of special occasions, especially football matches, where we wear it with great pride. It's associated with families or districts. I'm wearing Dunblane tartan in my waistcoat because I was born in Dunblane, and my kilt is Fraser tartan because I'm a Fraser. So do you have to be Scottish to wear it? No. Anyone can wear tartan. It's worn all over the world. So how do you make tartan? Well, this is the bloom paw. Um, you can make tartan on modern machinery very quickly, but I prefer using this old-fashioned wooden loom. Looks very complicated. It looks it, but it isn't really. If you imagine my fingers are the long threads in the cloth, and this is the thread that the shuttle puts in across the way, and it gets pushed down into position like that. And if you keep on doing that, you eventually end up with a bit of cloth. Mm. Can I have a go? Yes, sure. OK. Oh, oh, great. You're doing very well, Paul. You're weaving McGregor of Deeside Tartan. Well, I'm sure he'll be very pleased. I'm sure. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's Butterfingers the Weaver. <laughs> <laughs> This is how tartan is usually seen in a kilt. This is a formal kilt from the McNabb clan tartan, worn on special occasions with a posh jacket and bow tie. Now, kilts don't have any pockets, so you need a sporran. You've got to have somewhere to keep your pocket money. Crocan has an English new in the sea. Excuse me. The Scottish warrior had nothing like that. They had a phalemore, which was basically a huge tartan blanket they could sleep under as well. It was folded against the shoulder, flung over the back, and tied together in the middle with a belt. I feel just like Mel Gibson in Braveheart. They can take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom. Excuse me. Well, that just about answers the tartan question. I'm off on a haggis hunt. Apparently, they have one set of legs shorter than the other because they spend their lives running around the bottom of hills. Should be easy to catch, then. <laughs> You'll never catch me! <laughs> okay, what did she say? Uh, I don't know. She's still putting on that silly Scottish accent. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for all your letters. If we answered your question on today's show, you'll be getting a T-shirt exactly like this one. Ooh. Yes, and good luck with the competition. And if you'd like to write to us, why not drop us a line at Dear Mr. Barker? P.O. Box 1545. <laughs> London W12, 60 for dog, B for biscuit. And our email address is dear Mr. Barker at BBC Co. UK. That's all for now. Bye bye. bye. bye.